Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. It's Friday, you bastard. There was no insurrection, and to call it an insurrection, in my opinion, is a bold-faced lie. Watching the TV footage of those who entered the Capitol and walked through Statuary Hall showed people in an orderly fashion staying between the stanchions and ropes taking videos and pictures. <laughs> you know, if you didn't know the TV footage was a video from January the 6th, you would actually think it was a normal tourist visit. Outright propaganda and lies are being used to unleash the national security state against law-abiding U.S. citizens, especially Trump voters. As a result, the DOJ is harassing, harassing peaceful patriots across the country. It was Trump supporters who lost their lives that day, uh, not Trump supporters who were taking the lives of others. When I see this sheet on our timeline and on the, let's see, uh, okay, at 207, a mob of Trump supporters breached the steps. I don't know who did a poll uh, that is Trump supporters. You had the media saying the same thing, just like you had the media saying uh, Officer Sigmund was killed with a uh, fire extinguisher, which he was not. But I don't know who did the poll to say the that they had, were Trump supporters. These people are completely without shame. Without shame, everybody. Hello. Happy Friday, you bastards. Happy Friday. This is the Friday before our vacation. I haven't said that in about a year because <laughs> we haven't had a vacation. So we're going to have one. Uh, you know, we can go maskless now. And if we see anybody with a MAGA hat, we will stay six feet apart. That is the rule for the Randy Rhodes Show on social distancing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Because, you know, there for, for, if some if somebody has MAGA hat on him, uh, could could I just suggest COVID? Not COVID doesn't really matter. Stay away, stay away, six feet away. Good rule of thumb, because you know they're violent and stuff. It's just uh, you know, like I said, not all Trump supporters are terrorists, but all terrorists are Trump supporters these days. So good luck with that. Uh, we won't be here to, uh, you know, remind you. So good luck with that because people are going to start lying like Republicans. See, like that there. They're going to lie about whether or not they're vaccinated. They are. They're going to lie about that. Uh, and so, you know, what, what, what are you going to do? You know, if they're if they're an anti-masker, they may start wearing masks. now. I mean, the whole thing is just uh, black is white, up is down. We're through the looking glass. I have no idea. I have no earthly idea. So, um be careful, you know, go with God and uh, all that good stuff. Meanwhile, what we have here are examples of people covering up for domestic terrorists. That's what that tape is. I don't know why people just don't want to say that out loud, but they need to say that out loud because that was a House Oversight and Reform Committee hearing yesterday about the attack on the Capitol, which they denied even took place. They said it was regular tourist stuff. It was your regular tourist stuff. So I'm guessing that the noose, I'm guessing that that, that noose uh, was a thrill ride of some sort. I don't know. And I'm saying, you know, normal tourists, they always go into Nancy Pelosi's office, tear it up, and sit there with their cattle prod by their side. Yes, that's what tourists do. And they all come with bear spray, except normal tourists who do pack bear spray are usually going to a place where there are bears. And I can promise you, they don't use that much bear spray and they don't use it as often as they did on this tour. Andrew Clyde literally described people walking through Statuary Hall in an orderly fashion, staying between the stanchions and ropes, taking videos and pictures. You, you mean the pictures the FBI are culling through in order to make their arrests? You mean those pictures? You mean those videos, the ones that law enforcement is using to track down terrorists? You mean those? 
Oh, this is very twisted and very sick. And you know, you know, I figured out why they're doing it. I don't know if anybody else has figured it out, but for me, this is kind of simple. You know that there's talk now about a 9-11 style commission into the January 6th insurrection, right? You know that. And today we heard that there was a piece of legislation that was agreed upon that would be introduced on Monday uh, in order to set that commission up. Uh, it's just like the 9-11 commission, it'll be 10 commissioners with law enforcement backgrounds, intelligence backgrounds, no active uh, you know, Republican governors or Democratic governors, no partisans, no people that are currently serving in any capacity, not even as staff to you know, uh, Republicans or Democrats, you know, just like the 9-11 commission, right? Same thing with a broad background in cybersecurity, a broad background in law enforcement, a broad background in law itself, okay. Uh, and we heard that that was agreed upon and that it would come to the floor on Monday and they would vote and it would set up the uh, All of a sudden, uh, Kevin McCarthy said, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down, baby, slow down. I didn't sign off on that. And bingo, the light goes off. Bulb over my head. Very bright in here. It's very bright. That's why you think I'm not wearing lipstick. Bright white light. I am. It's very bright lipstick, believe it or not. Anyway, this is why. Kevin McCarthy, Paul Gosar, Andy Biggs, Jody Heiss, Norman from Georgia there in that video, all these people, they're witnesses. You understand that? They're witnesses. They will be called by any independent commission. They will be called to testify because they were at the rally the night before. They were there that day they know what happened here okay paul gosar you know can i just remind you that paul gosar's family tried to tell you that paul gosar was not right that he was unsuitable to run for office i mean he has a big family i think he had like seven brothers and sisters they put out an ad remember that and paul gosar's family they came they sat on the tv they told everybody uh, you know, listen, he's there's something wrong with him. Uh, we don't know what he's a white supremacist. Uh, you know, you you gotta you gotta like kind of, you know, wake up and not elect him to dog catcher. The, the, the demand is not right. He, he there's something. Well, here, here, here. This is his brother. Paul swore an oath to, to support, defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. When you take that oath and you commit treason and insurrection. Um, aren't you the person that um, has committed those crimes? And aren't you the enemy that you're sworn to protect us from? So you want your brother expelled? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. He, he thumbed his nose at his oath um, and uh, put people in harm's way. And five people are dead because of the events that he set in motion, that he masterminded and that he organized. Oh, my God. Uh, you and, and two of your siblings actually appeared in a campaign ad against uh, your brother, saying uh, that you were going to vote for his opponent uh, in 2018. So what have the family gatherings been like since then? Well, I don't gather with Paul Lawrence. Um, I don't have a relationship with Paul. I have a zero tolerance for white supremacy and hate uh, and people that won't tell the truth, people that don't have integrity or character. And I, I, I know that that's who Paul is, and I don't have a relationship and won't. So Paul Gosar's family did do an ad campaign in 2018 telling the people uh, of, of you know, uh, his district not to vote for him because he was a white supremacist. He was a liar. There's something not right about him. He's not all there. Uh, and he is uh, not to be trusted. He doesn't care about the Constitution or any of those things. Uh, and now you have his brother actually telling Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC after January 6th that his brother actually organized this insurrection and has lied about this insurrection. And, of course, at the oversight hearing yesterday, he continued to lie um, because, you know, there's always fatalities when tourists come to D.C., right? There's always dead people. Come for the cherry blossoms. Stay for the police.
all things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. There was no insurrection, and to call it an insurrection, in my opinion, is a bold-faced lie. Watching the TV footage of those who entered the Capitol and walked through Statuary Hall hmm. showed people in an orderly fashion staying between the stanchions and ropes taking videos and pictures. You know, if you didn't know the TV footage was a video from January the 6th, you would actually think it was a normal tourist visit. <coughs> this is really sick and twisted. And the reason they do it is because they are guilty of inciting an insurrection. They are guilty of what we saw on the TV. They they aided and abetted. Uh, you remember Ali Alexander? Do you remember uh, that he said that Paul Gosar organized it? He was the one that came up with the idea for an insurrection. And Paul Gosar uh, and Andy Biggs got behind it and they uh, helped promote it and all that. I mean, it, it, this is unbelievable. Uh, but now, you know, the media are starting to confront some of these represent, uh, representatives because they said this ridiculous thing yesterday and they have the nerve to tell the reporters who said, did you really say that this was a normal touristy thing? Did you, I mean, there were some, you know, uh, uh, orderly protesters. There were some that were walking through Statuary Hall peacefully with their Confederate flags. But they said to him, are you serious about this? The reporters uh, actually asked uh, Andrew Clyde from Georgia, uh, do you want to take this back? And you know what his answer was? You know, you people, you're taking me out of context. That's why I keep playing it, okay? That's why. Do you, you stand by those saying, statements? Do you regret saying that? Five, five people died, in, including police officers, and you're here today honoring police officers. <clears throat> if you're honest in your statement. What's wrong about it? When that's what you well, said. Think about what you just said. You didn't take what I said in context at all. So can so, you explain so to us? Explain, it? explain to us. You explain go, to us. You go listen to what I said. Okay. We did. So Do you believe what? that January 6th was was an insurrection? And he gets into his Ford F-150. Okay. Yeah, a real American there. Dude, what do you mean we took you out of context? I keep playing you in context. And you keep saying this was, if you didn't have the videos, you would think it was a normal tourist, uh, you know, thing. I, I, I'm sure tourism in Washington, D.C. does not include that many fatalities a day. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure most tourists do not come for the cherry blossoms and stay to beat police officers with hockey sticks. I'm pretty sure. If there were no video, you mean the videos law enforcement has been circling faces and asking us on FBI websites to identify if we can because they're wanted for terrorism, for domestic terrorism? I, those people, I mean, I, this is, it, it, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, okay? And let me tell you something. Some of the police officers who were attacked that day, uh, you know, I'm not going to show over and over again the video of Michael Fanone being tased and Michael Fanone being uh, dragged and Michael Fanone, you know, uh, almost dying and having to be rescued. I'm not. But I'm going to play Michael Fanone saying, I can't believe I'm hearing this from Republican, you know, members of the House. I've talked a lot about what I witnessed in that tunnel, uh, the courage, selflessness, bravery of all of those other officers. It was just incredible uh you know there were there were officers that were in there that under normal circumstances would have been you know on their way to a hospital in an ambulance but they were picking themselves back up getting back into the line uh and you know fighting to protect the capital protect their fellow officers that was the most awe-inspiring scene of my life and i'll never forget it is that why it's so insulting to hear members of our government elected officials pretend that this was a normal tourist day or that these were peaceful patriots who were kissing and hugging the police officers there? Yeah, no, I mean, I, 
I'm not interested in getting into like political squabbles. I'm not a politician. I'm not an elected official. Um, I don't expect anybody to give two shits about my opinions. But I will say this, um, you know, those are lies. Um, and peddling that bullshit is an assault on every officer that fought to defend the Capitol. It's disgraceful. It is, but it, it's explainable. And I want Michael Fanone and I want other officers who are there to understand why they're doing it. They're doing it because they organized this. They're doing it because the acting Secretary of Defense, Chris Miller, was actually with the president on January 3rd. And on January 3rd, the president told the acting Secretary of Defense, Chris Miller, that Muriel Bowser, okay, the mayor of D.C., had requested National Guardsmen that everybody in the whole wide world, including this audience, me, you, all of us, knew that there was going to be violence at the Capitol on the day that they were going to certify the Electoral College. Everybody knew it. And Muriel Bowser in D.C. knew it. And she requested National Guard troops. And Chris Miller was told by President Donald Trump, protect the protesters, not the members. I don't, and that's the memo that we all read, that we all saw, that Chris Miller issued on January 4th, two days before, where he said, I am not arming the National Guard. I will give you 340 uh, National Guardsmen. They are to be nowhere near the protesters. That's why they ended up doing traffic duty that day. They are not to touch the protesters, question the protesters, look at the protesters, it, you know, insinuate themselves into any protest because we are going to protect their constitutional right to gouge out police officers' eyeballs, apparently. Right? And so he wrote that memo saying, I will not arm them. I will not give them helmets. I will not give them uh, any, uh, uh, you know, weapons, bayonets. We've read this to you 8,000 times because when I saw that memo, that was the smoking gun. The meaning that it told us that Donald Trump had ordered, first of all, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Esper, to leave. He had dismissed him 11 days before this. And then he put this dude in and said, you are not to touch the insurrectionists. I want them protected. And yesterday, Mark Carlin at BuzzFlash, he, he noticed that there was testimony about this, and he pulled it and said, you know, this was uh, very little notice. This really wasn't uh, something that people uh, paid a lot of attention to. But it's important because Chris Miller testifies very matter-of-factly, without any drama, that the President of the United States knew that Muriel Bowser had requested National Guardsmen and that he was instructed not to touch the protesters. He was instructed not to protect the Capitol, not to protect congressional members. No, he was told, protect the protesters. Protect them. And that's why the pictures look the way they do. That is why you have guys with cattle prods sitting at Nancy Pelosi's desk. That is why you had a guy with a Confederate flag. That is why you had Oath Keepers busting through the window. That is why the police got cornered and crushed in the doorway. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Here's Chris Miller testifying yesterday. And Trump on the 3rd of January concerning some international threats. And at the very end, he asked if there were any requests for National Guard support. And I informed him of Mayor Bowser's request. Mr. Miller, to, be, to clarify that point, did you tell the president about the mayor's request or did President Trump ask if there were requests? He asked if there were requests. What was the president's response to you? with regard to the request made by Mayor Bowser? Fill it and do whatever was necessary to protect the uh, demonstrators uh, and uh, that were executing their constitutionally protected rights. Which, uh, which, which part of the Constitution, uh, which amendment is it, I, I get uh, confused, that guarantees you the right to beat police officers with hockey sticks? Which amendment is uh, the one that says that you could gouge out someone's eyes? the 46th amendment <laughs> I, 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 I'm curious now I, I, 
Which 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 part of the Constitution gives you the right to uh, overthrow your government? Uh, which one? No, he didn't. He he wanted the military to stand down. Is what he wanted. He didn't want the military to help the police officers to put down an insurrection or anything even. Th- and that's why he put this guy, Chris Miller, into the act. Secretary of Defense position and pulled Esper out 11 days before and then two days before the insurrection to- asked him were there any requests for National Guard he said yeah Muriel Bowser you know in DC she wants National Guard of course she wants it. everybody knows there's going to be some sort of contretemps tomorrow you know you know you got this big rally playing Paul Gosar's going all the white supremacists are going you know everybody is going right everybody is going in there they're all believing your big lie and uh, you told them that they need to uh, you know show up and you're going you're go- you're going to tell them to go charge the Capitol yeah. and he did and I'll be with you, and we're going to march down to the cat. And then, of course, he peeled off and went home because he's a coward. He's a, a lily-livered coward. That's what he is. So, of course, the D.C. cops and the Capitol Police were now tasked with trying to stop the assault on the Capitol all by themselves, all by themselves. And now the organizers of this thing, the Republican sycophants who just kicked you know, Liz Cheney out of leadership, right? Uh, They all are lying about what they saw on this videotape. And the police officers are starting to come forward and uh, starting to say how insulting and how bizarre and how unbelievably scary this all was. We heard Officer Fernone pleading, saying, I have kids. I have kids trying to save his own life. You said you didn't think you were going to make it through alive there. And again, I I don't want to make this about the members of Congress. You work around them and near them, but you know there's a notion out in the country among some people that, eh, you know, these people, they weren't out there for harm. I mean, how do you convince them? I I can uh, relate to Officer Fanon when it comes to that. I have a daughter and I had a moment where I didn't think that, hey, it was a possibility I might not make it home. Um, so I, I relate to that, and it is it's saddening because uh, you know what you went through. And I feel like that's a lot of time where officers find um, like solitude in each other is because nobody really understands what we went through, um, even with thousands of hours of footage of what we went through. It's hard to believe that people still deny um, what really happened. I, I If you, the video of it, evidence doesn't show it. I, I don't know how you can convince people this has nothing to do with politics. It was a all-out attack. We, that had nothing to do with politics. It was just... It's so frustrating when you when you hear people say things like that. Like, how do you look at that tape and see anything else than a assault? I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand. Yeah. Well, I want to help uh, these uh, Capitol Police officers understand. It's because they're covering up aiding and abetting an incitement of an insurrection. And they left you guys to fend for yourselves. That's why the National Guard was doing traffic duty. That's why you didn't get helmets. That's why you didn't get Uh, any backup that's why you were you know sacrificial lambs and they're all sitting there you know we're not political we don't understand they they really truly don't understand how it's possible for 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 representatives for republicans to sit there yesterday at this oversight uh you know hearing and say this was a normal tourist day that nothing happened if you looked at the tape you would say this was just a normal thing people were you know uh, gathered people were you know, walking through Sanctuary Hall. They were taking photographs. It was all normal. They're, I don't know. We don't know what the police are talking about. We don't know. And they're sitting there trying to give interviews to, you know, uh, all different networks saying, please, somebody explain to us, you know, why don't the Republicans in Congress recognize how 140 of us were wounded? Why don't they understand what the tapes clearly show? Why are they sitting there pretending nothing happened? And the answer is, 
their accomplices. They're witnesses, and they will be witnesses in any commission that investigates what happened to you. And that is what is going to occur. There will be, after long last, a 9-11 style commission for 1621, and that is going to call witnesses. And the witnesses that the commission will call will be Paul Gosar, will be Andy Biggs, will be uh, this Andrew Clyde from Georgia, will be uh, Kevin McCarthy. It's going to be those people who are lying now. They are the witnesses to the crime that was committed against your body, to the crime that was committed against your brethren, to the crime that was committed against our Capitol and our congressmen who were hiding in their offices under desks and just just being terrorized literally by terrorists. That's why they're lying. They're accomplices. And, you know, Pelosi... She just wants the commission, really. Uh, but she thought what she heard yesterday was sick. Sadly, yesterday there was a hearing in the uh, Committee on Government Reform that was quite appalling. I, it's no use my even telling you about it. You have to see it for yourself because you would not believe that a, a Republican member on the committee said that what happened that day was just the normal, orderly visit of people to the Capitol. Really? Really? Well, I don't know on a normal day around here when people are threatening to hang the vice president of the United States or shoot the speaker in the forehead uh, or disrupt uh, and injure so many uh, police officers. Uh, I, I don't consider that normal. Multiple people were killed. Over 140 police officers were issued. A gallows was uh, put up and the attackers chanted, hang the vice president. Normal? Oh, Nancy, the gallows is a new thrill ride to bring more tourists to Capitol Hill. That's all, and Mike Pence was part of an ad campaign to increase tourism there. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Given all your work on voting rights, when you see this so-called audit in Arizona with cell phone jammers and UV lights and conspiracy theories about bamboo ballots brought in from Asia, what is happening there? It's a continuation of the big lie, but more importantly and more concerningly, it's a continuation of the insurrection, oh! of this attempt to disen disenfranchise voters and to dismiss the legitimacy of our elections. And we know that this is only part of a larger intention. Uh, just today, there was leaked audio from Heritage Action for America, where they admitted that this is model legislation being promulgated across the country through a vast Republican intention of limiting access to the right to vote because they think it's the best way to win. And according to the leaked audio, they've been meeting with secretaries of state, with governors, with legislators, all with the intent of putting forward legislation that will restrict access to the right to vote and make it easier for Republicans to win. And we should all be concerned because our elections are not about partisanship. It should not be a question of Republicans or Democrats gaming the system, but everyone being able to participate and make their own choices. Exactly, exactly. This is a continuation of the insurrection. And why did we have an insurrection? We had an insurrection because of a lie, a very big lie, a lie that said that the election was stolen from Donald Trump, even though he lost by 7 million votes, and a whole gigantic host of electoral college voters. So, uh, you know, this is uh, all the fraud that's going on in Arizona. It is all part of the same story. OK, the reason why these Republicans are lying uh, and the reason why that they are covering up is because they incited this insurrection with an eye toward with an eye toward two things. Number one, maybe getting Donald Trump inserted back into the Oval, which was crazy. So only the Gosars and the Biggs and the Giuliani's and the, the Sidney Powell's with her cracking and all that. Only they thought that that was, you know, while a long shot, somewhere possible in the weirdness of their imaginary, uh, you know, intellectual prowess. I don't know what to call it. I mean, they're just willing to lie. But now, now they keep the big lie going to cover their behinds to CYA, right? And to keep the big lie alive so that they can then change access 
to the ballots for Americans. What is she talking about there, a leak tape? She said something about a leak tape. What is that leak tape? Now, you remember, I don't know, maybe last week or the beginning of the, I, I, it's all, you know, it all melts together because there's so much every single day. But I said that when they were all on the floor of the state legislatures across this country and everybody all of a sudden started talking about the three-fifths compromise, Remember that? They were all on the floor. You had people in Arizona doing it. You had people in Florida doing it. You had people in Georgia doing it. All of a sudden talking about the three-fifths compromise and rewriting history, right? Saying that there was no desire to keep African Americans from their dignity or from, you know, when we said in our Constitution that African Americans would be counted for the purpose of selecting electors uh, as three-fifths of a human, right? Remember that? And I said, this just reeks. This this feels like Alec. This feels like somebody handed model legislation, pre-written legislation to legislators, and they all ended up talking from the same sheet of paper. Remember that? I was right. I was right. Ari Berman, over at Mother Jones, was able to get from a group of people called Documented, who videotape things, uh, they, he, the, Ari Berman was able to get a copy of a tape that was recorded at the Heritage Action, I don't even wanna call them committee, you know, the Heritage Foundation has a one-two punch, right? They have the Heritage Foundation that was started by Paul Weirich, remember him, Paul we- Weirich? who in 1980 made it very plain that he was gonna go to sleep at night and get up every single morning thinking about how to disenfranchise voters, especially non-Christian, non-white ones. I love this clip, I play this clip all the time. Now many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome, good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. Okay, so Paul Weirich founded the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation is supported by big money, big, huge money, like the Koch brothers, okay? And the Koch brothers looked at Heritage and said, okay, now we need an action uh, you know, a one-two punch, like Heritage will come up with the policy and we need Heritage, Heritage action to deploy what they call sentinels, swear to God, uh, and people with money in their pockets to bribe through, uh, you know, legislatures and, uh, you know, fundraisers for uh, legislators at the federal level and state level that we're going to need a lot of money because, you know, we're going to have to, you know, buy these uh, votes. Uh, we need something called Heritage action. And so that's what Heritage has. It has these two parts. It has Heritage Foundation and Heritage Action. Well, this was a meeting of the Heritage Action portion. Now, the Koch brothers are big donors to Heritage Action. They also uh, are the originators of ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council. ALEC literally drafts bills on behalf of big money donors like the Koch brothers, right? They draft the legislation. Then they give the legislation to people like Heritage Action Sentinels and Heritage Action activists, and they spread out across the country, and they tell governors and secretaries of state and legislators and uh, uh, leaders of uh, state houses, leaders of state senates, uh, majority leaders, minority leaders, they tell them, this is the legislation that we're putting our money behind. We need you to pass this. And they hand them a pre-written piece of legislation. That is exactly why that's what happened. And that's exactly how everybody ended up talking about the three-fifths compromise. I mean, these people, you know, they, they, they tell you nothing, but they show you everything. I mean, they show you every damn thing that they're about. Paul Weirich, back in 1980, when he stood up there in front of the the, the Jerry Falwell crowd, that's what that was, uh, you know, the Christian coalition, and told them, we don't want everybody to vote. We need to block people from voting. You know, it was racism then and it's racism now. 
Uh, but we don't want brown people voting. We don't want black people voting. We don't want non-Christians voting. We want to limit their access to the ballot. And they have been doing this, uh, seriously doing this, trying so hard. And that is why we got the Shelby versus Holder case brought to the Supreme Court, right? Challenging whether or not racism was over in this country and we did we need the protections of pre-clearance for states that had demonstrated over a period of 25 years that they continuously block access to the ballot for entire classes of people. And if they have been found in pattern and practice to have done that, then any changes to drop boxes, to voting methodology, to in-person voting, to the number of polling places that would be available in this cycle or the next cycle, uh, access to absentee ballots, reasons, no reason, any changes to any voting laws would have to be pre-cleared by the federal government because they had demonstrated a desire and a pattern and a practice of discrimination in voting. That's what Shelby versus Holder, and that these are the groups that paid to have this litigated through the court system to get to the Supreme Court, and John Roberts and Antonin Scalia, who wrote it, said, racism is over in America, and you don't need to pre-clear with us anymore. The John Lewis Voting Rights Act, which Joe Manchin just came out for, by the way, he's not for H.R. 1, but H.R. 1 and S. 1, the For the People Act, this is the target of the Heritage Foundation. This is the target of Heritage Action. This is the target of ALEC, okay? This is the piece of legislation that they are all just incensed about, and they are out there doing exactly the opposite of what HR1 would do, which was would be to standardize voting across this country, meaning everyone would get two weeks of early voting. Everyone would get access to an absentee ballot. Everyone, uh, you know, would have shown voter ID in order to, you know, be cleared ahead of the election, right? Everybody would do all these things and they would end gerrymandering in HR1. Yeah, that's in there too. But the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, it only deals with one thing, and that's the pre-clearance thing. And the John Lewis Voting Rights Act overturns Shelby versus Holder. Well, Heritage, Heritage Action, Alec, Koch Brothers, all these big money deletes, they don't want to see this pass. They don't want anything to... So they decided that they were going to be proactive and go lobby Republican governors, Republican secretaries of state, Republican legislatures in Arizona, in Georgia, in Florida, in Iowa to literally shut down access to voting ahead of any... Right? There's tape. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. I'm Ari Berman, voting rights reporter for Mother Jones, with an exclusive new video from Documented about a right-wing group leading the GOP's war on voting. I had one message for him. Do not wait to sign that bill. If you wait even an hour, you will look weak. This bill needs to be signed immediately. You're watching Jessica Anderson. We know that the fraud is real. We know that it can be proven. These choices really show that the, the swamp is alive and well. The left is using this basically as psychological warfare. A former Trump administration official, and now the executive director of Heritage Action for America, talking to top donors in Tucson, Arizona in late April. She's telling them about a meeting she had with Georgia Governor Brian Kemp just three days before the Georgia legislature passed a sweeping bill rolling back voting access in that state. The state legislature in Georgia got it done, and you can help own this and cheerlead this if you sign it quickly. Do not delay. But according to the video, Heritage Action did much more than just advocate for the bill. Iowa was the first state that we got to work in, and we did it quickly and we did it quietly. Honestly, 
nobody noticed. Hmm. At the end of the day, the bill that Governor Kemp signed and the Georgia legislature marshaled through had eight key provisions that Heritage recommended. This leaked video reveals how Heritage is leading a massive right-wing campaign to suppress voting rights in key battleground states like Georgia, Arizona, Florida, and Iowa just this year. We're working with these state legislators to make sure they have all of the information they need to draft the bills. In some cases, we actually draft them for them, or we have a sentinel on our behalf give them the model legislation. So it has that grassroots, you know, from the bottom up uh, type of vibe. A While vibe. these bills are being sold as protecting quote unquote election integrity, the real purpose seems to be to help Republicans win elections. They plan to spend $24 million over the next two years in Michigan, Michigan Nevada, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Texas, Pennsylvania, and beyond to quote unquote right the wrongs of November. And we are gonna take the fierce fire that is in every single one of our bellies to right the wrongs of November, to right the, right the wrongs of the mistreatment against these men and move it into other states. The Heritage Foundation is one of the best funded think tanks in Republican circles. They write the policy and their sister organization, the dark money group Heritage Action makes it happen. From writing and advocating these anti-democratic bills to leading the effort to block the For the People Act in Congress, Heritage is weaponizing Trump's big lie to motivate their donors and their base to strip Americans of their fundamental right to vote. I'm telling you, this is, uh, you know, Alec was actually exposed by people like me a couple years ago, right, who were saying uh, the Koch brothers have this group called the American Legislative, uh, you know, uh, Execution Committee or whatever, Alec, and they, they were literally drafting bills. They were writing legislation and handing it to people who they were fundraising for who you know when you hear that these groups are well funded and when you hear that they're they're spending 24 million dollars so you say well what are they spending it on they're buying legislators is what it is they're buying them they're 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 saying come to a fundraiser and you know we'll put money in your coffers that's what the money is for all right so Alec got caught and they got exposed in a lot of corporate America, which is happening now too. A lot of corporate America said, okay, we're not gonna be part of ALEC anymore, which is the Koch brothers version of heritage action, right? Uh, and so a lot of corporate, uh, you know, uh, people, a lot of companies pulled out of ALEC saying this is ridiculous that the Koch brothers are writing legislation for this entire country and getting it passed because uh, the dark money is literally going into the pockets of legislators who need to run for re-election again and need to put up commercials. So they pulled out because they got embarrassed. They got exposed and they got embarrassed. And that is what we are trying to do. That's what Ari Berman is trying to do with this tape. That is what other groups who film this swill uh, are trying to do. They're trying to, uh, and, and it's working in this way. You know, companies in Georgia like Delta and Coca-Cola and American Airlines in Texas, you know, when you expose this nefarious, ugly, white supremacist underbelly that girds the Heritage Foundation, beginning with Paul Weyreich and ending with Paul Weyreich, who was the brainchild of Alec, Wy Weyreich started Heritage went to, you know, got money from the Koch brothers, went to the Koch brothers, showed them exactly how to write legislation. They did it, got exposed. Then they started Heritage Action, which really is ALEC, okay? And now you've got corporate America saying, oh, we don't want to have anything to do with this one either. And that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. But that is what is going on with this voter suppression effort. And that is why everybody is reading from the same hymnal. And that is why we had an insurrection, and that is why Donald Trump told a big lie, knowing that he lost the election, and that is why he keeps doubling down on the big lie, knowing that he lost an election. And this is, the, the, the people who are lying for Donald Trump at this point, some of them are just dumb as rocks and white supremacists, like a Paul Gosar, like an Andy Biggs. Others of them are doing it for money, like the Kevin McCarthy's of the world, like the Brian Kemp's in Georgia, like the Ron DeSantis is in Florida, okay? They're doing it for the money. They're doing it because there's lots of money in passing these pieces of legislation that were written by Paul Weyreich's groups, whether it's Heritage, Heritage Action, or ALEC. Those are all 
things that Paul Weirich did, created, funded, campaigns for, solicits for, gets donors for, in order to win elections without Democrats being able to vote because they have no ideas other than cheating. And so they've devoted their entire lives to cheating you out of your vote. So this meeting that was recorded, that happened on April 22nd, this is just a couple weeks ago, in Tucson. And Jessica Anderson, she is the director, the executive director of Heritage Action for America, the sister organization of the Heritage Foundation and the new ALEC, right? Uh, because corporations ran away from Alec, okay? And she used to work for Donald Trump at Office of Management and Budget. She had a gig, a political appointee at OMB. And when Trump was no longer Trump, she went to work for the lobby shop for Heritage Action. And she's standing on this stage, and this video was recorded by a watchdog group called Documented, and Documented recorded her telling these people at Heritage Actions, uh, you know, a, a, a little, um, I don't know what you would call it, a meeting last month in Tucson. They recorded her telling them there's big money in this for you. We have $24 million for legislators who passed this voter suppression legislation that we drafted for you quickly. There's plenty of money for you if you draft it quickly. Don't even wait because if you wait, They'll view it as weakness. I don't know who the they are is in that sentence. I don't know if she's talking about uh, heritage action. I don't know if she's talking about people she calls sentinels. I don't know if she's talking about the lobbyists that are throwing these fundraisers for these legislators who are basically pass-throughs, right? Here's how it goes. Like, so heritage action commits $24 million. Lobbyists are called and lobbyists are told, we have $24 million and we need you to go through your Rolodex and find friendly uh, legislators and throw a fundraiser for them and tell them that, you know, it's being done on their behalf, uh, big money from Heritage Action, and then we expect them to pass this voter suppression bill that we wrote. That's how it works. It's not that complicated. It's very simple, actually, but it's really ugly. And the best thing that we can, and, and believe me, uh, the, the advocacy groups like Tea Party Patriots, believe, they didn't go away. Freedom Works, Dick Army's groups, Susan B. Anthony, they, they're all at these meetings. They're all there. All these groups are at these meetings. And they're the ones that send out emails to concerned citizens and, you know, do the Fox appearances and, you know, all this stuff. When they don't know you're watching, they, they tell you exactly what they're doing. They always have. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. We all have an obligation, and I would say Fox News especially, especially Fox News, has a particular obligation to make sure people know the election wasn't stolen. Fox News, Fox times. News, Brett, I'm going to answer your question. Fox News needs to make no, sure that the American people, Fox News, you have they to need know to that make we, sure that, that the American times. people, Brett, you're doing the interview. I'm answering the questions. Congresswoman. We need to make sure that the American people recognize and understand that the election wasn't stolen, that we shouldn't perpetuate the big lie, and that there's real danger. You know, I've worked in countries around the world where we don't have peaceful transitions of power. And, and all of us who are elected officials have got to uh, make sure that we obey and abide by the oath that we swore to the Constitution. I understand. And the, the peaceful transition of power is key to that. Now, if you want to, if you're asking me about my constituents. My constituents believe firmly in the rule of law. They believe firmly in the Constitution. They know that we do not swear allegiance to any individual. Okay, and that it's, let me ask it's you this. crucially important. And you've made this if point. We, I'm going to make another point. It's crucially important if we want to be able to defeat the really bad Biden policies. We have to attract ah. voters back to us. Do we have to be able believe? to attract the voters who left us by making clear we know the election wasn't stolen and we are going to abide by the rule of law. So apparently uh, Liz Cheney had to go on Fox News to call out Fox News and Fox News didn't want to be called out. And so Brett Baer, who 
tries to do straight news as opposed to Tucker Carlson, who argues that no reasonable person would believe anything he said anyway, uh, as a defense, a legal defense in court, which the court accepted as a legal defense that no reasonable man would believe anything Tucker Carlson says. Uh, and Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram, uh, you know, they all argue that no reasonable person would believe us. None, you know, I mean, uh, you know, the idiots that watch us and, and repeat this stuff as if it's true. Yeah, we're using them. We're using them. We're toying with them. They're rag dolls. They're toadies. They, they, they just lick up to us. And uh, we don't know why. We don't know why. We think what we're doing is fun bamboozling the American people. Brett Baer is like, I'm not them. I'm not them, Liz. She's like, uh, you know, your network has spread and hosted the Sentinels from the Heritage Foundation, the lobbyists, and all of the Cretans out there, the Gosars, the Bigs, the Trumps, that are spreading this big lie to the detriment of the American people. And that is a bridge too far for me. Sure, my father and his running mate, W., you know, they uh, they gamed the system in 2000. They got the Supreme Court to stop counting votes. But you did it wrong. You did it wrong. The way you're doing it is frightening me. And I need you to stop it. Sure, we told a big lie about the need to go to war in Iraq. You know, we said they were armed. We said they were dangerous. We said that they were somehow responsible for 9-11, which obviously the Saudis were. You know, 15 of the 19 hijackers on that day were from Saudi Arabia, just saying. Uh, But we wanted to attack Iraq, so we lied. And, you know, uh, that was a big lie, and it caused a million Iraqis to be dead today and over 4,000 American soldiers to be dead today and God knows how many suffering with post-traumatic stress disorder today and God knows how many, you know, without legs or arms or limbs missing because of, you know, our big lie. But this, this has got to stop. It's really twisted. And you know, it's twisted because it was always evil and it was always nefarious and it was always ugly and it was always based on racist hopes and dreams. It was always based on keeping certain people from accessing the ballot. It was always based on fewer people showing up. The people were coming and they came in 2020 and the Republicans know that when the people come, they lose and the big lie was born. And that is why we had an insurrection and that freaked her out. I think that was it, you know, I think the the actual violence here on our homeland by domestic terrorists, I think that freaked her out. Cause you know, the, the, the ridiculous thinking she's got is terrorist, 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 right? All the time she sees them everywhere, but now she sees them here. I think it freaked her out. I really do. And I think she understands that all this lying that they have done and all this voter suppression and all this redistribution of wealth, all this frustration and hostility and incivility that Republicans have caused, that they have sold, that they have campaigned on, that they have preached from the highest mountaintops, from every media outlet that you know would host them. I mean, all this money being spent on conservative talk radio for what? to get you to give money to the Heritage Foundation, to get you to give money to Freedom Works, to get you to give money to the Tea Party Patriots, to get you to give money so that they could take that money and buy themselves legislators who would lie, cheat, and steal for the Koch brothers. And you've been doing it for years. People who listen to that conservative thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of conservative Tea Party, Patriot, Bull Crap, Dick Army's Freedom Works and Heritage and Paul Weirich's Heritage Foundation, all sponsors, all over conservative talk, right? To the point where they were competing against each other, right? Tea Party Patriots, they couldn't get, you know, uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh to advertise for them because he was getting all this money from Heritage, right? There was a big contract. Glenn Beck, is he for Heritage or is he for Tea Party? Is he for Freedom Works or is he? Our big, big contratops, right? And that's what's going on in the Republican Party yet again with her. They want to split off, okay? These Republicans, the Liz Cheney Republicans, right? They want to split off from the Kevin McCarthy Republicans. They do this to themselves all the time in the rush to get the money. So you've got the never Trumpers, right? Republicans, though. Remember the guy that wrote um, the anonymous We Are the Resistance op-ed? 
Miles Taylor. Miles Taylor is now trying to set up another Republican Party, a separate Republican Party from Kevin McCarthy's Republican Party. This is exactly what happened when Rush Limbaugh, who was a paid endorser since, like, I don't know, the early 2000s of Heritage Foundation, was offered, uh, you know, big money uh, to do the Tea Party stuff, to do the Tea Party Patriots, to do Freedom Works. And everybody was just like following the money. Well, who's paying us more? Who's paying us more? We'll, we'll spread any lie you want, any lie at all. Birtherism, no problem. The ACA is, is, is somehow bad for you and it's a good job killer. It's going to destroy you. See, that was what the Heritage Foundation, that's what the Tea Party Patriots, that's what Freedom Works, they all glommed on to the ACA, which made a difference in millions of Americans, including me, our lives, our ability to get health insurance at no greater cost than if we hadn't had cancer, no greater cost if we don't have diabetes or do have diabetes, no greater cost if we did have congestive heart failure, right? The ACA was the great leveler. Oh my God, these health insurance companies were pissed, pissed that they would have to offer health insurance to people who would spend more on their health than people who didn't. Ah, uh, come on, we gotta pay claims on the people who we know are gonna use their health insurance. We like the people who don't use their health insurance. We like collecting premiums from them. That's a winning proposition for us. We don't want to pay claims. What do you mean we have to cover people that have pre-existing conditions? What do you mean we have to pay claims on, you know, we have to pay for insulin? Are you freaking kidding me? You know how expensive that is, right? They were all competing to overturn the ACA. That's what started the Tea Party crap and the birtherism crap. And now it's gone back to heritage. Back to heritage because Alec got caught and the Tea Party is over. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. If we rewind mm-hmm. to January 6th and we saw the footage and we saw the smoke and we didn't even know the death toll yet, but we knew this was horrific. And for the people whose very lives were threatened, whose vice president was almost lynched, to go in there and say this election was a sham, mm. that's co-signing on an attack. That's aiding and abetting the enemy. Yeah. That's that, that's that kind of language that we use against brown people all over the world in the history of colonialism, but are unafraid to use it when it's senators from a party that's lashed itself to whiteness. So Baratunde needs to understand that not all of us are afraid (laughs) to call it out, but that there are names that actually go along with it. There are actual people. There are actual names. Hans von Spaskovy. I can can never say his name. Hans von Spakovsky. Uh, you know, he, he worked for W and for 20 years, this guy has been trying to limit access to voting. Um, he has lobbied, uh, in this particular big lie era. He's, he's, he's lobbying, uh, conservative secretaries of state. He's lobbying governors. He's, you know, and he, he's, he's over at heritage foundation and, you know, he's telling them, uh, do the Orwellian thing, say it's all about election integrity as you take away access to the ballots for brown people for non-christians or whatever it is that you know they're targeting i mean he 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 keeps saying the only way we're going to take back power that's what he says the only way we're going to take back power is to spread the big lie and to stop the people from voting like they did in november november was the highest voter turnout this country had seen since 1900 and we can't have that we cannot have the American people self-governing. We cannot have a real government formed by the people. It doesn't work for us. It doesn't work for corporations. It doesn't work for the moral majority. It doesn't work for the silent majority. It doesn't work for the birthers. It doesn't work for white supremacists. It doesn't work for, uh, you know, anybody who is uh, still part of this Republican Party. You know, it, it, we want to take away health insurance from people, not expand health insurance to people. We want to keep wages low, not give people a decent living wage so we can, you know, eradicate poverty in this country so what people work 40 hours a week and they're still poor they keep going along with it 
Now, every time they get frustrated and they show up at the polls, we have to do something to keep them from getting access to that ballot. And this is what we're going to do this cycle. Because if not, we're going to not only do, do we lose the House, not only do we lose the Senate, not only do we lose the presidency when everybody showed up to vote, but we're going to lose it again and it, they're going to defy history. We have a, a chance here at getting a Republican majority back because that's what history tells us typically happens. But if the people show up again like they did in 2020, we don't have any chance. Now, Paul Weirich, the guy who invented the Heritage Foundation, he's also the inventor of Alec. He also invented Alec for the Koch brothers. And this all has to do with, uh, you know, the moral majority, Jerry Falwell, the evangelical voters, and very big robber barons in this country. Charles and David Koch, who, you know, one of them's dead, but Richard Mellon Scaife, Joseph Coors. These are the dollars behind the invention of these think tanks, if you will, you know, these, uh, you know, uh, conservative groups. But it's not enough money. So what they did was they went to conservative talk show hosts who commanded thousands of hours a day across this country to the detriment of people like me, right? So like Rush Limbaugh, if he was promised clearance on every market, which he was, across this country, and an individual market said, you know, he's gone too far, he called Sandra Fluke a prostitute, or he's gone too far, and he's done this, and he's done that, or he's, he's, he's you know, Barack the Magic Negro, I mean, the racism is too much for us, right? So we're going to, you know, cancel a show. The company I used to work for, they would say, all right, take Randy, take Randy's uh, station. And, and then it kept happening after the Sandra Fluke thing, right? And so that's why I had to go out on my own. But they would go to him. And they would go to Mark Levin and they would go to, why do you think Sean Hannity has a radio show and a TV show? Because it's lucrative, that's why. And where is the money coming from? Well, it's not coming from Coca-Cola. It's coming from Heritage Foundation. It's coming from, uh, you know, if you listen to those shows, you'll see they're shilling all the time for these think tanks, all the time. That's where the money comes from. And then the money goes to the legislators who are paid to pass legislation that keeps you from being able to participate in your own future. All under the Orwellian guise of integrity. I mean, it's sick, but I've known this for so long and I keep on trying to explain it to people and people don't want to hear it, but now you have them on tape, literally in the age of videotape, in the age of cell phones, in the age of you know uh, being able to spread the word on the internet. You know, you got reporters who just won't give it up. I, I'm one of them. Ari Berman is another one. Greg Pallast is another. There are so many of us that just are not going to give up our, our, our Constitution for them, for these snot-nosed rag dolls, for these, for, for these spineless pawns who do it all for money, all for money. Heritage action is dark money. We don't even know where the money comes from. All we know is what we hear on the radio. All we know is like, uh, you know, public records, okay? So if, uh, you know, if they go into a sponsorship with, you know, uh, 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 Hannity, they can watch, you know, like uh, how many list- how many uh, new subscribers they got from this particular, uh, you know, ad campaign. So they'll see 40,000 new subscribers. They'll see 20,000 new subscribers. They'll see 100,000 new subscribers, right? They'll see, and that's how they, that's how we know. That's how I know. But it's a dark money group. They don't have to disclose. But we could tell you that they received at least half a billion dollars from the Koch brothers. Half a billion. I'm sorry, half a million, 500,000. 500,000, I added a a set of zeros. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But they write the policy, okay? They write it. The former president of the Heritage Foundation, you know, Senator Jim DeMint, he left his Senate seat and he went to be president of the Heritage Foundation. And he described the relationship between Heritage and Heritage Action, which places the sponsorships, right? He said, it's a one-two punch, quote, the foundation writes the policies and Heritage Action makes it happen. Heritage Action raised more than $11 million in 2019. And of course, the mastermind is Von Spavsky who's done more than any other operative to spread the myth of voter fraud. He's the one that said, we need, you know, when when Trump won, 
he actually said to Trump, now you have to set up an election fraud, right? And everybody wondered, like, why why are they setting up an election fraud? They won. It was to start the big lie. It was to start saying, uh, you know, that uh, if he ever lost, there was election fraud in 2000. And so we came in and we cleaned it up. But they couldn't find any. Chris Kobach couldn't find any. He was the Kansas Secretary of State. So when I tell you that they go and lobby Republican secretaries of state who are in charge of your elections, I'm telling you something that is documentable. That is document. You can research it. <laughs> it's documented is what I'm saying. Now, Kobach went and he wanted sensitive voter data from all 50 states, and the state said no. No. And a judge ruled that that was illegal. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Okay, now listen to somebody who gives a damn about your voting uh, rights, okay? Just listen to this again, now that you know what you know. Uh, What is happening there? It's a continuation of the big lie, but more importantly and more concerningly, it's a continuation of the insurrection, of this attempt to disenfranchise voters and to dismiss the legitimacy of our elections. And we know that this is only part of a larger intention. Uh, Just today, there was leaked audio from Heritage Action for America, where they admitted that this is model legislation being promulgated across the country through a vast Republican intention of limiting access to the right to vote because they think it's the best way to win. And according to the leaked audio, they've been meeting with secretaries of state, with governors, with legislators, all with the intent of putting forward legislation that will restrict access to the right to vote and make it easier for Republicans to win. And we should all be concerned because our elections are not about partisanship. It should not be a question of Republicans or Democrats gaming the system, but everyone being able to participate and make their own choices. Yeah, and that doesn't benefit Republicans. When everybody participates, they lose. There are more of us than there are of them. Again, only 25% of Americans identify as Republicans anymore. And when you lose Liz Cheney, okay, when you lose Charlie Dent and you lose Liz Cheney and you lose, uh, you know, uh, John Kasich, You've lost your party. There's no Republican party. The disapproval rating for Donald Trump has gone down another 10% in the last month. People are walking away from this lunatic fringe in droves. It's like a stampede. They're like stepping on each other to get out of there. And the Republicans that are left are, are either white supremacists or doing it for the money. That's it. That's all that's left of that party. There is no policy, there's no middle class infrastructure bill, there's no health insurance, there's no health plan, there's no jobs plan, there's no infrastructure package, there's no voting rights protection, there's no effort to standardize voting across all the states so that we're guaranteed a certain level of access to the ballots. Now this is what she's uh, proposing. She's saying just standardize voting. This is what the John Lewis Voting Rights Act would do. I think it's important that the voting rights standards that are embedded in the For the People Act, that they pass. And that is standardizing and laying a threshold for how people vote no matter where they live. And whether that occurs through the For the People Act, which I I know is stalled currently, but this is a long year. And as we discovered in 2020, years can take a lot longer than we imagine. But we also know that the persistence of this attack on voting rights in Florida, in Georgia, in Texas, in Arizona, in Iowa, now introduced in Michigan, in Ohio, that these attacks are going to continue, that Heritage Action says it intends to do this in Nevada and in Pennsylvania, that every time we see our right to vote under attack, it should reaffirm for every good American, especially ones who hold federal office in the U.S. Senate, that we have to protect the right to vote, not to defend a party, but to defend the ideals of our nation, and that the most patriotic thing we can do is pass voting rights legislation that actually defends the right to vote for all. Oh, that would be bad, right? That's a, that's a bad position. I don't agree with the policy of two weeks of early voting in every single state. I don't agree with the policy of everybody being able to vote uh, any way that they want to vote, whether they want to vote in person, they want to vote absentee. 
I don't believe that. I think that we need to follow the Heritage Foundation's eight ways to keep people from accessing their ballot. And that is what they have. They have a list of eight different things that they want. It's called their best practices. You can actually look it up. Uh, it's uh, eight, eight recommendations. Okay. Uh, they call it best practices. Um, and it has all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, um, restrictions on who gets access to the ballot on voter roll purges purges of people who didn't vote last cycle they get removed you just they get removed why why because there are more independents more democrats than there are republicans and they know they can't win so they want to rig the game and they do it in the most orwellian way war is peace freedom is slavery we were always at war with eurasia we were always at war with uh, you know uh, oceania i mean just it's unbelievable and they spend their entire lives doing this their entire lives uh brother david sister you've nailed it uh, as usual um this is systemic. Uh, we started out with Orwell when we went for image over actual in 1980. Then we moved through Vonnegut. We moved through Ray Bradbury. Then we were Sinclair Lewis. We could maybe be Aldous Huxley, but we're coming right back full circle to Orwell again. Um, that's why 2022 is so critical. It's, it's beyond critical. And, um, yeah, I, I never in a million years thought I would ever agree with Liz Cheney, ever. Right. And there it is. I, I mean, she she obviously saw the terrorism and said, "Oh, I'm anti-terrorist," you know. So yeah, yeah, it's scary. Well, it, and we all saw it, and there's more coming to see. This is huge. Um, real quick, I learned from the chat room. Hi, chat room. That you aren't happy with your new hairdo. Oh, I didn't say I wasn't happy with it. I just said, you know, uh, the, it, it was shocking. That's all. No, oh, I think it's pretty. I, you reminds me of Julie Christie and shampoo. I think it becomes you. It's a Julie Christie. You know who else? I remember Swing Out Sister, Kareen. Yes. It's very, very Swing Out it's Sister. It's very Swing yes. Out Sister. It's also, it's also Pretty Woman when she was the prostitute. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the, the, <laughs> the blonde wig? She said it's a glamour choice, right? It's a glamour choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, vacation at last. Yay. Sister. Yes. I, hey, I got my first dose of Surfizer today, and I'm feeling just fine. So you go for it. You enjoy it. You so deserve listen, it. You earn it. Uh, thank you very much. I have to try out the no mask thing this, you know, this weekend. Right. I'm very excited to do. Uh, but I want you to have some Tylenol standing by. Maybe a little Pedialyte is good or a little, uh, you know, right. um, Gatorade Zero. No sugar in there. Uh, <laughs> just in case tomorrow you start feeling a little icky. Uh, okay. Get that Tylenol on board. The second you think you might not feel so good, and it, 20 minutes later, you'll be fine. See, this is why we love you. Okay. Um, there are still more of us, Randy, I and know. the people keep coming, yes. and uh, we will do it. Gorgeous girdles for everyone, <laughs> not for just a few. Love you, <laughs> always. Thank you. Oh, my God. That's how far back he goes. You know, one of my biggest dreams in all of my career has nothing to do with uh, radio or video or YouTube or Periscope or even God Love Free Speech TV. No, my biggest dream was to create, and I still have it as a dream, I just need somebody to help me, to create a line of gorgeous girdles for everybody, not just a few. <laughs> and David remembers that from years ago. And I, you know what? I, I, I have not given up on the dream. I have not given up on the dream. Uh, Freddie in California. Hey, Randy, big fan of yours. I just wanted to call and thank you for all your work. Uh, I don't care about your hair. It always looks great. And congratulations, <laughs> you know, you. for quit smoking. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Quick thing I want to say is about the Democratic messaging is so bad. Mm -hmm. When I talk to Republicans, I constantly remind them that I'm a conservative. I vote Democrat because the Republican Party is not and has not been conservative for so long. There's nothing conservative about it. You know, health care, education, housing, good jobs in the environment. None of those things are, con you know, beyond conservative thinking. They're not liberal in any way whatsoever. So I just want to call and thank you. Yesterday with the insurrection, what you were saying, and you mentioned Antifa, and I wanted to remind people that 
the fascists that were attacking the Capitol are the people that Antifa has been fighting. They've Thank been, you. Actually, they've been trying to tell you that there is this whole faction out there of people like this, that there are three percenters and oath keepers and racists and, and, and the Charlottesville crowd and the Proud Boys, they are very racist. And, they, and that, you know, they're fascists. They're, they're literally authoritarians. They're fascists and they're scared. They're scared they're, they're, and they're dangerous because they are so frustrated, so angry and so frightened. They're like wounded animals and they will do harm. And you know what? The people who have been trying to tell you that, who are on the wall who are anti-fascists, like my dad who fought against fascism and your grandparents that fought against fascism and your parents that fought against fascism. We've been trying to tell you for the longest damn time. Yes, it can happen here. And the way it happens is by not paying attention. Now, I got to tell you, Monday, I know I won't be here, but I think Monday is going to be an interesting day if you give a damn about these pedophile Republicans, okay, just saying. Uh, Joel Greenberg, who I introduced you to, who is the tax collector from Florida, okay, uh, from Seminole County, you don't need to know that, is taking a plea deal to rat out Matt Getz. To rat him out. Because they're rats. They're a family of rats. They're all rats. And uh, Getz is going to be on the chopping block on Monday. Not a good weekend for him not a good weekend and I understand that Greenberg's gonna plead guilty to six felonies that's a plea bargain he had 33 